This is Prime News. This is something we never thought in a million years could happen. There's been no sign of Brianne since Saturday. We know she's coming back safe. She disappeared right in front of the home while riding bikes with Austin. Most of the time I was outside with her. That time I was cooking. It's about finding this one little child. This is a calm street. Everybody knows everybody. I mean, there's we have two city workers that live on the end. I mean, somebody saw something. 43-year-old Sean Morgan who lives just down this street, was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. Morgan tells police he saw Brianne standing uh, that very day on a ladder at his swimming pool, this ladder in fact, grabbed her, took her inside, suffocated her with a white trash bag. We are still conducting a search for uh, Brianne's body. It has not yet been recovered. This man is behind the disappearance of an American woman in Aruba, but they've got only two weeks to try to prove it. They're all heartbroken, I mean. We want somebody to tell us where she is. I don't know what's next for these parents. Uh, I couldn't imagine being them, and, and you heard right there that they were talking about their neighborhood, how much they like it, how everyone knows each other. Well, apparently they don't. Uh, all necessarily know each other because the killer was on that street. We talked about this last night. How well do we know our neighbors? How well did they know their neighbors? Uh, and now the search continues. I want to show you a photograph of Claudia and Edgar Rod, uh, uh, looking for their daughter. Um, she was disposed of uh, allegedly in a river. I want you to take a look at this photograph of there they are continuing that search. What do they do next? I mean, they live on the street where the alleged killer lives. They know that's where their daughter was abducted. That alleged killer has a family that is still living there, and presumably they're not necessarily going to move. Uh, they've got three more children they have to take care of, three children they've got to explain all this to. Do you stay on the street? Do you move? What do you do next? I know what they're doing now. They're still looking for their daughter, uh, Brienne, looking for her remains at this point. Uh, back with me, John Lusich and Wendy Walsh. Uh, Wendy, I, this, you know, we don't, I don't know if we always think about this. You know, what happens next for the family, right? And, and, and here I'm talking about a very practical thing. Like, where do you live? You live on this street, the street where your daughter was abducted, the street where the alleged killer lives five houses away. You've got three more children. Is, is there any way that they could continue to live there? Or do they have to get themselves up and get somewhere else? And, and that's just another, you know, another part of this. They, they've lost this beautiful little girl. How do they, how do they continue their lives? And, and with the practical aspects of just finding, where do you live? Well, the good news, Vinny, is that killer is not going to be home anytime soon, and he's probably going to lose his house over this. So um, I, I really am, am amazed at the emotional fortitude of Brianna's father to not go over and <laughs> kill this guy. I mean, it's just amazing, this very strong family. And the answer to your question is it depends what kind of community support they do have. If they do have very close friends and neighbors uprooting children just like that, um, in the middle of their grief and tragedy may not be the best thing for the family. On the other hand, maybe the family feels that a fresh start to a new place might help put some of the memories behind. But in the very short term, it's still dealing with loss and grieving. And, you know, the big answer to what's going to help heal them is really time. I mean, they'll never really heal from this kind of tragedy, but time can help a bit. The road they live on is called Ode Johnson Road. I want you to take a look at um, where Brianne's home is and where the alleged killer's home is and take a look at this street. And you can see, um, look, look how close. I mean, can you live and continue to raise your children on that street? And I'm not sure. I mean, the, the, the killer, if he is the killer, will be gone and not back. But his family may remain there. Um, and he's got children that live there. I mean, is it even fathomable to to remain on this street what do you do you've got three more children that are going to learn about what happened i mean would they be scared to be in their own house in their own neighborhood uh john lucich this is the part of of crime and tragedy that's that sometimes uh we don't always think about you know we move on and we talk about the trial and the guilt and the penalty phase and everything 
Uh, tonight, I'm thinking about these parents and the three children that they still have. Right. And, it, and here's what I say. You know, what they went through is the most heartbreaking thing they could ever went, could anybody could ever go through. Those people who lost that little girl, they stay put right there and they make sure that they're there every day at trial and they make sure that justice is done. And if they have the death penalty, they make sure that their voice is heard. So this guy possibly gets the death penalty when he's found guilty. And one of the other neighbors uh, from this street, his name's Marty Miller, and, and this whole neighborhood was chipping in looking for Brianne when she was missing. He actually drove with the alleged killer. Take a listen. I said, I'm going to ride around town. And Sean said, well, can I go eat? I said, well, sure. That's what you think. Oh, my goodness. I had him in the truck with me. To me, if you describe him, you think mild and meek, you know. Nothing unusual. Same old Sean. You know, and just nothing that would give you any indication that's that something that happened like that. Unbelievable. And today, uh, the suspect's home, and, and the story here is that in his confession, he alleges that the little girl went by his pool, or right now the home and the pool, everything uh, has been roped off as a, as a crime scene. Uh, Wendy Walsh, how about the three children in, in trying to have them continue you've got to explain this to them and then the other part of it that it's going to be a natural reaction for a small child is is fear fear to of be course. in that neighborhood where you know my little sister she was taken and she was killed of course and the reaction of course has to be we will not let this stop us we will not let this tragedy stop our family from being strong and loving because they win Vinny, when people get too scared it's just like how you know terrorism affects the public in america so it's very important that i mean obviously there's going to be a great time of loss and grieving and i do suggest professional family therapy to help these kids work through it but the message from the parents has got to be this is rare it will never happen again. We will always protect you, and the world is a safe place. I wanted to show you one more mostly thing. mostly it is. I want to show everyone at home one more thing before we go, and, and that's where they're searching uh, for little Brianne. Apparently, according to the confession, dumped in the river. Uh, there's five different waterways uh, that they could be looking at tonight. There you see where their home is, and there you see all these waterways. Uh, may be very, very difficult to find those remains, but hopefully... Uh, they can, so she can rest in peace. John Lusich, Wendy Walsh, thank you so much.